If you're raising corn, soybeans, and wheat, the ideal pH, they say, is around 6.3 to 6.8. Let's say that your soil pH is 7.5, maybe it's 8, maybe even 8.5. How can you take that high pH soil and get it down into the ideal range? A lot of people may have told you, oh, you can't do it, but that's ridiculous. You absolutely can't. Here are the most common reasons why your pH is high. Could be poor drainage, could be high salt, could be high magnesium. Those factors, we can solve all those. Let's start with the drainage. We want to make sure that we have good drainage in all fields. If your field is suffering from poor drainage, just get some tile out there, lower that water table. Over time, you're going to see that pH start to go down in most cases. We've had that in the field we're standing in right here. It's exactly what I had when I bought the field. I had some spots above 8, fixed the drainage, and over time that pH has been coming down. What you often see on soil tests is the leachable nutrients like sulfur and boron and potentially nitrates. Uh, those things will be a little bit higher. They'll be at elevated levels in areas where you've got poor drainage. Also, salts. Soluble salts will be typically on the rise in those kind of areas as well. So if you've got those problems, they would signify, just looking at a soil test, that you know something's happening with drainage and you're not able to move those things through the soil. They say that magnesium raises soil pH about 1.6 to 1 compared to calcium. Sodium, on the other hand, raises soil pH roughly 4 to 1 compared to calcium. If you have high sodium levels or sodic soil, you need to start with good drainage. Then we want to turn that sodium into a salt. You can usually do that by adding some sulfur. A lot of people will talk about gypsum, for example. That's calcium sulfate. Well, you can leave the calcium in the soil, which is great for your soil, gives your soil more porosity and then take the sulfate. Basically, that will interact with that sodium to form sodium sulfate. That's a salt. Salts are leachable, so once you have good drainage, you have decent soil porosity, you've maybe reduced some compaction out there, hey, now we can start flushing some of that sodium out in the form of salt. The big thing here is it's not going to happen overnight, so you're not going to be able to flush the negative things out or the excess things out of your soil like in a week. Oh, I put some tile in, everything's just going to magically disappear. It's going to come down over time, but the important thing is to make that first right choice and get the process moving, get those things starting to move through your soil. Now, the next thing you can look at is what can I add to my soil? Brian talked about soil amendments a little bit, but I look at things like magnesium. If you've got too much magnesium, yeah, you can start moving it out of your soil, but let's add more of the good things. Now we can get that ratio right. So if our ratio is one to one with calcium and magnesium, that's not what we want. If we add more calcium, all of a sudden that ratio becomes heavily in favor of calcium and we can get our soils to the ideal mix. With elemental sulfur, you can also lower pH pretty quickly. At our Ag PhD Field Day site, we had David Hewla, the world record corn producer, on our farm. And he said, you know what, you guys have some high pH in the plot area that I'm going to have a plot. He took a low 7s pH all the way down to 5.1 in just a few months with the use of elemental sulfur. The key with elemental sulfur, just like when we talk about lime, the key with elemental sulfur is very, very small particle size. The smaller the particle, the faster the pH change, the more permanent that change can be as long as you've taken care of the other soil factors that caused your pH to go high in the first place. If you add too much salt, uh, we want to improve the drainage. We want to quit applying manure or other high salt products, at least for a little while, to flush the salt out. I mean, you just have to look at the factors that cause your pH to get high in the first place. If you've fixed those factors, well, now that pH change should be permanent. Now, we don't want soil pH down to 5.1 if we're raising corn, soybeans, or wheat. We do want it in the sixes, and you can do that by adding a little bit of elemental sulfur as part of this process. But again, make sure you're taking care of drainage, compaction, calcium, all those things should be first. There are three more things that we didn't mention. First of all, uh, there's a couple other causes of high soil pH. You could have poor irrigation water quality. We've seen this across the country where we get irrigation water up in the 8.5 to 9 pH, and when you constantly add 8.5 or 9 pH out to your field, it's going to raise the pH over time. The other thing is erosion, and I've got some ground myself that I picked up that was heavily eroded years back, and those eroded hilltops were very high in soil pH. 
And the last thing that I wanted to mention is soil sampling. We've got to measure small areas out in the field with grid soil sampling to find these areas because high pH is probably not across your entire field. At least it's not exactly the same across your whole field. So it may take some different methods in different parts of your farm to fix it. Real quick, Darren mentioned erosion. Erosion is not the cause of high soil pH. You may have had subsoil that was high in pH. Well, now your subsoil is, in effect, your topsoil if all the topsoil left. So how do you lower that? By building new topsoil. Do everything you can to reduce tillage, improve overall organic matter, maybe add some manure, cover crops, those types of things. Make sure the drainage is good. Use elemental sulfur, all the steps we've talked about today. But you on your farm, regardless of the cause, you absolutely can lower your soil pH if you want to. It's up to you. Controlling our Weed of the Week is also up to you. We'll show you how to do it coming up next.